Alright, so you'll remember from one of the other videos I found that the campus interference from this pigtail is quite severe f uh, for this compass at the back on the GPS unit and, and it was very severe when the, the uh, pigtail was over the compass. It's less severe when I pull it up, sort of managing. But what I wanted to do was mount another compass, another external compass, away from this source of uh, interference. So they've arrived uh, today and um, the one I'm going to try is this one, which is a CMJ sorry CJM MCU 150 so it's basically it's a Bosch I don't know whether you can see that but it's a Bosch BMM 150 uh, compass and not much else uh, one of the problems they're very cheap these you can get these all over the place I got these from AliExpress I think they're only like five bucks each or something or maybe maybe even less um, so they're cheap they're simple the Bosch sensor, I, th I think Bosch sensors are pretty good, so I was pretty pleased about this. One of the problems is there's almost no documentation on these, and actually the only documentation I can find is actually for the sensor itself, not for the board. And so <laughs> I've had to do sort of a fair amount of asking around and experimentation to find out um, what to do, but I have figured it out, which is great. And uh, there are a couple of things to note. So this board supports both SPI and I2C, uh, but since there's no external SPI on the flight on the Lumenia flight controller, um, I'm going to use I2C. But I2C is not the default protocol. There's this uh, there's a PS PS pin here, and with again whether you can see that there's a PS pin there, and that stands for protocol select, and that by default is SPI, and if you pull it high, uh, you get I2C. So you've got to pull that high. The next thing to notice is about the power supply. So there's, there's VCC here, but it doesn't say what VCC is, um, and uh, all the documentation I could find basically lists the sensor VCC range, which is 1.2 to 3.6 volts uh, and 3 points 3 point so therefore 3.3 volts is very hard to find on this board there is a 3.3 supply underneath with the debug output um, but conveniently Tridge was able to support that there's actually a an LDO here so there's basically a voltage regulator which um, not on this one but on the the pictures on the web is identifiable as a 3.3 volt voltage regulator so pretty confident that this will take 5 volts or 4.5 volts uh, reasonably the other thing to notice is that the Bosch um, documentation also contains uh, a data sheet for a breakout board and I think this has been based on that Bosch breakout board and uh, there on the breakout board there is pull up and pull down resistors for the PS pin so I think I'm reasonably confident again that I can simply connect the PS pin to VCC VCC can be 5 or thereabouts volts and all will work which is great um, so uh, I've got two of these in case I damage one uh, and I've actually soldered one up and uh, so you can see here or maybe you can't see here but I've got a wire running from PS to VCC I've got the I2C pins running to the I2C output which is on the top here labeled CL2 and DA2 and then ground connected and then I've, I've uh, wired um, VCC to the 4V5 output here because that's supplied by uh, USB as well. I, I originally put it on this 5 volt here associated with the buzzer but that's not powered unless you've got the battery on so that's not much good. So uh, I've got that wired up 
um, and uh, I'll connect Mission Planner and see what I can see. Okay, so here is Mission Planner. I've uh, connected to the flight controller. If I go to me Setup, Mandatory Hardware, Hardware ID, I can see that the BMM150 is listed both in the device ID is the one that's important. So this shows devices that were detected and then the priority here. And actually, if I look at the compass list as well, uh, yeah, I can see that the BMM 150 is, is there, which is great. <coughs> uh, interestingly, I note that in the data sheet for this compass, it actually has four possible I2C addresses, depending on how you pull up or pull down a couple of the pins on the board. Um, but the RG Pilot implementation of this driver for BMM 150 basically cycles through all of the possible I2C addresses. And so whatever the address is, um, uh, it's found it correctly. So that's great. Um, so the next thing I need to do is orient this correctly. So you see there's no orientation here, but where I want to put this is on the side so what I want to do is mount this on the side here and I think you can see if you look at the the, the board closely you can see that there's a, a XYZ orientation so this is the front and this here and this is down and so what I want to do is pitch down by 90 uh, which I believe is 270 pitch and then roll right, um, sorry, roll left by 90, which should be roll 270. So I think this, this should be pitch 270, roll 270. So I'll try that, but I'm also gonna try enabling auto rotation on when I calibrate the compass again, just to see whether it can get the correct rotation. Um, <laughs> my worry is that actually, uh, there won't be an appropriate rotation. I might have to mount it another way um, because the custom rotation feature is only available for one compass and I'm already using it on this one at the back. So I need a standard rotation for this uh, to work. So uh, what I'm gonna do is put some heat shrink on this, mount it up uh, and then see what kind of uh, output I can get. Okay, so what, uh, what I've done, I can see I've mounted the compass where I said I was going to put it, and I've just temporarily fixed the top on the frame. And then I've set orient. Oops. Compass orient 2 to 35, which is roll 270, pitch 270. So that was my best guess at what the orientation was. And then I ran um, compass calibration and that seemed to work okay, the compass cal calibrated. So then what I did was I um, went back to, so if you remember I've switched off compass auto rotation because I don't want the custom rotation to get messed up with. So what I did was I set this to two, check and fix. And then set these two orientations to zero and then did another calibration to see what it came up with uh, for the auto rotation. And it also came up with 35 uh, as the second one doesn't come up with the customer rotation, but that's fine, I could ignore that. So I'm reasonably confident that 35 is correct. Um, so I've set these now back to custom calibration and I've done another calibration of the compass with, um, with the auto rotation disabled. Uh, so then what I want to do is look at the actual compass output and there's a couple of ways I do this. Um, one is to 
click on this EKF uh, button and just check that the EKF is happy with the compass. Um, and that seemed okay. The other thing is to look at these mag outputs. So you can see this, we've got MX, this is X axis, compass one, X axis, compass two, and so on. So what I'm looking for is for these values to be similar-ish, but most importantly, moving in the same direction when I move the copter, because if they're moving in different directions, that's a good indication that the um, compass has been oriented wrongly. So what I'm going to do is do that now. So if I lift up the, the nose of the copter, you can see that X is decreasing and roughly in the same direction. And similarly with Z. Um, yeah, so Z decreases. And similarly with Y, Y is decreasing increasing and then if I do roll the same way y is increasing z is decreasing x is about the same which is good y decreasing z increasing so I would say that's correct they're moving in the right direction I mean they're, they're very you know it's quite noisy this data but uh, um, the fact that they're roughly the same and roughly in the same direction is a good indication that the compass is oriented correctly, which is uh, fantastic. So what I need to do next is um, fully assemble the copter, put the battery on, do another compass calibration with the battery on, so with, with the, the copter actually powered. Uh, because there'll be some at rest interference from this pigtail that I want to capture and some at rest interference from the battery uh, that I want to cover. Uh, and uh, once I've done that calibration, then I want to rerun the compass motor interference test with both compasses enabled to make sure that I got that captured the motor interference correctly on both, um, uh, both compasses. Okay, so I've done a compass calibration with the battery on and that's produced really good results. Uh, and so I'm now gonna do a compass motor calibration. So I've put on some smaller props. So I've got a, some four inch props that uh, I've used for this just a bit safer. Uh, I flipped them upside down, rotated one position round. I don't think the copter's not in any danger of going anywhere, but I think the, the props are big enough to generate enough current. And so I've got the motor test compass mod screen up here. Uh, and what I find is you have to raise the throttle evenly when you start the test, but then you have to bring it down very quickly, otherwise you get some false readings on the way down. Um, so uh, let's try that now. So I'm gonna start the test. And there you can see a reasonable um, uh, current up to 50 amps, which is pretty good. Uh, and the, the uh, interference only got up to 25%, so that's not too bad. Um, so I'll just check what the parameters look like here. So I go to full parameters list and we're looking at the So these parameters are all the compass MOT parameters. And so you see I've got MOT parameters for compass one, compass two, uh, and sort of as expected, the Z offset is high, significantly higher on the compass at the back than it is the compass at the front. Um, X and Y, not much interference at all, which is great. Still some interference on Z and that's going to be coming from the battery. Unfortunately, the battery is placed over the compass and as, as it goes through, um, you'll just get some interference. But overall, I'm very happy with that test. And uh, 
So what I'll do is I'll reboot the autopilot, uh, just check that the EKF and the values look correct again with the uh, offsets set. And uh, then I think I'm, I'm ready to fly. The only other thing I'm going to look at is uh, the compass. So what I want is for the, the price. So I've got two IMUs on this flight controller. There's the MPU 6000, which is not noisy, and the ICM 20602 that is noisy. And then I've got two compasses, one of which is more noisy than the other. And so I basically want the non-noisy IMU to go with a non-noisy compass and for that to be my primary. And so I just need to make sure that I've got that set up correctly. Okay, so I think all I need to do is set EK3 affinity. So by default, the EKF cores, each core runs on an IMU. EKF cores will use the primary sensor instance, but in the case of the compass, because I've got two, I want to have the core have affinity to a compass. So I've set enable compass affinity, which is this bit here, so value four, and um, save that. And I think that's all I need to do because the, um, I haven't, change the order of the cores so the, the, I'm actually using core one as the primary and core zero should be associated with the primary compass instance core one should be associated with the secondary compasses which the BMI BMM 150 is so I think that's all I need to do based on my configuration but I will I will check with the experts okay and actually, I think you can see that that's worked. If I look at the messages here, it says IMU 0, MAG 0, initial your alignment complete. IMU 1, MAG 1, initial your alignment complete. So I think I've got IMU 0 associated with MAG 0, IMU 1 with MAG 1, and it's IMU 1 and MAG 1, which are the, the, the less noisy sensors that I want to use. So I believe that it, that is correct. Okay, so uh, that was a bit of a disaster, it didn't work at all. <laughs> so what I found was, when I actually came to try and fly the copter, um, I got EKF errors about inconsistent yaw by quite a large margin. And um, I, my assumption is that that's just down to the quality of the sensor, so this is just not, or maybe the mounting, sometimes these things are, susceptible to mechanical stress. Um, so uh, so what I did in, in order to sort of figure things out, so I've also got some, uh, I think they're called GY271. So these again, cheap ones based from AliExpress, but this is based on the Q8553 uh, L, I think it is. Um, so what I did, I, I took a got a Matek um, Slim. Fortunately, I I have access to a bunch of flight controllers, so I can sort of do this. So I got a Matek Slim, and I mounted on the Matek Slim both the GY271 and this um, BMM150 in regular orientation. Did a calibration, and then in the orientation that I wanted, did a calibration, and um, the second sensor that I had, this BMM 150, was okay. It seemed to calibrate okay. The offsets were low, um, but the fit was not great. I think it was about 13. Whereas the GY271, the fit was pretty good. It was sort of in the 5.6 range, which is a much better fit. Uh, so I thought I'll try this one instead. Um, but interestingly, one well, of the other thing I noticed was the offsets for this mounted like this were far lower than the offsets here. So I've just mounted the other GY, or uh, sorry, I've just I've just soldered up the other GY two seven one, put some heat shrink on. I'm going to mount it in the same place. Uh, I was able to calibrate, and again, it was about five point six was the the fit. 
but the offsets were higher again and I think what's going on is that there is there are magnets in this buzzer and I think the magnets from the buzzer are interfering with the compass now that shouldn't matter because there it should just be a fixed offset and we should be able to cope um, and what I'm hoping is that the much better fit for this sensor will mean that it works quite well. Uh, I, but if push comes to shove, I may have to move the buzzer if that's a problem. I did. I was able to calibrate it. I tried the little EKF um, uh, graph on Mission Planner, and it seemed to indicate that things were going pretty well. Uh, so I'm going to mount this up and and try and fly. And you can see on the um, on here if I go to uh, whoops, she need to be connected. Uh, if I go to the hardware ID, You see the second compass shows up as a QMC 5883L um, with this custom orientation that is thirty-one. So I, I've got the way I've got this mounted is um, so this, this the Matek board is sort of in the same. This is forward on the, and the top for the flight control. You see the way I've got this mounted is with the pins towards the back uh, and uh, mounted on the side and I'm going to mount it in the same way and that again is orientation 31. Um, and uh, it's pretty easy to wire up because it's just 5 volt ground SCL SDA so there's no kind of messing around with pins high and low so it's a bit easy to use this one. Okay, so I'm going to try that. just wanted to demonstrate one final thing uh, on the cal calibration. Um, so with these settings, so you see we've got two compasses here. And um, the interesting thing is these. So, well, first of all, so you can see the offsets. The offsets for the second compass are not as bad as the prior one, but higher than when I did this individually. So I think this is related to the buzzer, but it seems okay. But then the motor offsets, you can see that for the, the first compass, which is the compass on the back, there's massive motor offsets, particularly for Z. And this relates to the, the current going through the, the pigtail. But the motor offsets for the forward compass are very low. And this is exactly what it wanted. So there's a bit of, bit of uh, Z um, bias there and I think that's due to the battery being above the compass uh, but um, in general this is pretty good and I'm pretty pleased with this so I'm hoping that this will cure the the, uh, um, the vibration compensation messages that I've been seeing but uh, only a, a tune and a flight will tell. Okay so I just wanted to uh, recap what I'd got, where I'd got to with the compasses because it was a little bit involved and uh, a long and winding road, um, but eventual success, which I was quite pleased about. Uh, so let me switch over. So we got the cop copter here. So as described in the video, what I ended up with was a GY271 which you can get very cheaply off uh, um, uh, Banggood or somewhere like that, or AliExpress, mounted in the front here, uh, angled on its side. Um, and uh, then obviously there's the compass at the back here as part of the, the GPS. But what I've ended up doing is using only this compass. So the, the um, the interference is significantly, significantly better here in the front, despite the magnets, despite the battery, despite everything. The, uh, the interference here is a lot worse. And the other annoying thing about here is that 
you know, it's all very susceptible to where you've got the, um, uh, the, the pigtail. And so I was wrapping battery leads around this and just trying to, you know, every time I'd mount it, this would be in a slightly different place, slightly different interference. So in the end, I switched to this guy. Um, I've, you know, you're always worried about clones and things. The QMC5883L is a clone anyway, so it's licensed from, um, I think the original part was Honeywell, but it was, it's, they licensed the design from them. And that's where all of these um, uh, uh, compasses come from. They all look the same. They're fairly easy to determine that you, you've got to, I mean, I'm not even sure you can get anything that doesn't count as genuine because they're effectively clones anyway. But it works really, really well for me. It's, it's, uh, I, so I think at least as well as this, this compass here, I get low offsets. Um, and so I'm relying on this. The other thing to say is I completely ditched EK3 Affinity. That just didn't work at all. Um, I, I, uh, I did just uh, get much, much better performance by simply having a single EK3 core on the second IMU, so the MPU. 6000 using this compass and uh, just the simplicity of that installation um, ha has resulted in you know, lots and lots of really very stable flights at some point in the future I may sort of try and resurrect the, the, the having two EK, EKF cores but it's the EKF's lane switching logic is not that controllable and you still get a decent amount of inter compass interference in particular um, when flying at high throttle. Uh, the, um, the, the good current calibration that Justin and Co did uh, for the, um, uh, on the current sensor has helped that a lot because if you remember I had this very high uh, uh, current ramp up up to something like 100 and what I thought was 170, 80 amps, something like that. Actually, it turns out that that, that was an incorrect calibration and that, that slope was too steep. And because the slope was too steep, we were getting too much motor interference, uh, so motor offset compensation based on the current. And uh, when Justin did a much better calibration, although it doesn't work at very low currents, so uh, there's always a permanent current of 2.3, amps even if you're not consuming anything at all above that it's a it's a more gentle slope only going up to i think 120 amps something like that and that reflects the um uh, the interference much better so the combination of compass external compass here one ekf core and a uh, better current uh, uh, calibration has just resulted into in a much more stable culture and so i'm really happy with the with the outcome uh, there i'll try and summarize all of the uh, the settings because uh, it is a little bit involved um i think the other thing to say is uh, obviously these these bmi uh, 150s i suspect are not as bad as i initially made out i think perhaps some of these other bits and pieces that were going on was affecting their ability to um uh, really giving the results I, uh, I wanted but that said I, I think given the choice again I would go with the GY271 that just seems to be uh, you know super stable lower interference these, these are a little bit no noisy as well I found just a little bit noisy and of course they're a little bit bigger which is annoying don't fit so well there so all in all I'll go, go with the GY271 the other final thing to say is that I actually switched the order of these two compasses. So I've got both compasses enabled and that's quite nice for comparison purposes in the logs. Um, but you can actually reorder the priority of the compasses, um, you know, move them up and down here in Mission Planner. And so I put the external compass as compass one rather than leaving it as compass two, so priority one. Uh, and that just made the setup of various other things um, uh, a little bit easier.